simulated crosswind trainer. Okay, what you talking about? We looked at the problem of crosswind training, and it's one of the. It's probably the most expensive maneuver to, to train that you can think of because you get 20 seconds in the crosswind and 10 minutes in the pattern coming around to get ready for the next one. Instead of building a simulator to train crosswind landings, we built a trainer. And this trainer can simulate any level of crosswind and gusts and random gusts as a nose wheel airplane or a tail wheel airplane and objectively scores the pilot and how they're doing. The X-Wind is an example of one of those tools that we've had for a little while and we're retooling to make it not just a trainer but also as a practice device so that pilots can get into this unit and do it over and over and over again on their own and get objectively scored in how they're doing with their crosswind landings. We look at crosswind uh, training and crosswind landings as a skill like riding a bicycle. And the nice thing about it is once you get it, you get it. We see a lot of pilots with an awful lot of hours that do a very poor job in this, in this crosswind trainer and then the light bulb comes on suddenly. Mm -hmm. Now what's, what's the physical layout here? How are you accomplishing this? Well, this trainer has a lateral left-right movement and a yaw movement. We don't worry about pitch in this case and we don't worry about power. What we're training here is finding a spot, finding a crab angle as you're coming down final where you can settle into a position uh, relative to the center line of the runway. And then once you get yourself positioned right, kicking in the rudder that you need, getting the nose straightened out, dropping that wing, and holding that position. In this particular trainer, this is on a 90 second cycle where we're making a two mile final into Austin Bergstrom Airport, as it happens, with the instructor or the student setting the amount of crosswind they have to deal with and the amount of gusts that they have to deal with. At the end of that cycle, once they've touched down, the trainer then scores them on a thousand point scale, a zero zero being a thousand points to let them know how they're doing and how they're progressing. And there's something about scoring and competing with yourself and competing with your fellow students that makes an activity like this really work. Because everybody should shoot for a thousand. I haven't hit a thousand yet, but, uh, but uh, that, that should be everybody's goal. Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest to use pilot interface in all of general aviation. Access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is as simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key. Pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer. Let me get this straight then. What we're talking about in changing the dynamic is dozens of landings per hour versus a couple landings per hour. Exactly, a landing every 90 seconds, as, as a matter of fact. So we're talking about more than 30 landings an hour. And honestly, that's just irreplaceable at every intensity that you could possibly think of. The airplane is a poor substitute for teaching crosswind landings to this device. How long have you been working on this idea? Well, this idea was actually developed by a man named Brad Whitsett, who started the company as X-Wind Company, and we joined the two companies together about two years ago. This product's been in development for about five years. I hit the market about three years ago, and now we've just made this improvement so that it could be a self-study machine operated by the students. And it's an investment for the average flight school. What's involved here? Well, this is a 29 a thousand dollar device. So at kind of a standard rate, the payoff is very, very fast on this. And interestingly, if you take a two hour lesson in an X-Win, a Vemco insurance company will give you 5% off on your insurance rates. And so it's a good investment for everybody involved. We're seeing most of these show up in flight schools that run a fairly high volume of students through. We're saving an undercarriage semester makes this, paying this off really easy, you know, a really easy proposition. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online, audio, and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio, and video programs every year, only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight, and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. Now, what kind of flight school would really uh, benefit most from having something like this? Is it going to require a fair amount of traffic to amortize something like this? Well, I think so. In, in, in some respects, uh, the, the X-Wind is a one-trick pony. 
it, it has one use. So if you've got a university where you've got quite a few students coming through or you're training a lot of large groups of foreign students all at one time, I wouldn't let them anywhere near the airplane until they perfected their landings you know, in this device. In some cases, these devices have been bought by a group of schools in one area, and many schools are using time on this device. How about showing me? Run, run me through this. This system for the instructor back here is, is the same as they'd have up in the cockpit. There's a simple on-off switch to power the unit up and a, and a run switch to start it. The crosswind direction can be set as a number of knots from 10 to 20 to 30 knots from the left or from the right, and then gusts using the right button sequence up here, we can actually make the gusts random. So we can have a pretty steady on-off gust situations or random gusts. So when you crank this baby up to about 20 knots of crosswind and put 10 knots of uh, gusts into that, you're talking about some pretty challenging landings. And then we grab that pilot that just fin told us he finished landing in a 35 knot crosswind and we see how he does it. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> Does the flight school per se require any specialized training to use it? It doesn't sound like there'd be much to it. You know, it's like all our devices. It takes about half a day to learn to use all of these things really well. Our challenge with our devices has always been not how to operate it, it's been how to use it. And making sure that schools, first of all, know how to operate them is one thing, but training them how to use them well is another. And that's something we spend a lot of time concentrating on with these devices. So.